Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse, and in today's segment, I want to discuss with you guys the pandemic that maybe or may not could happen this year, influenza in general, what we can do about it, the way that influenza has spread and the way it's acted in the past few years. And let's just go ahead and jump right in. So first things first, the first influenza outbreak that we have um, per the, what's my book here, the history of epidemics of, of Britain. Uh, the first epidemic here is in 1173 in Europe. And really we have about 3 million cases annually of this, so people know what influenza is, but we haven't really had a hardcore bad pandemic of influenza in quite a long time, certainly with the death toll that we had in the influenza outbreak of 1918. The most recent hardcore outbreaks have been, especially the pandemics, have been 1889, 1918, 1957, 68, and 77. Um, but I want to drive something home for you guys. The last time that we had a really nasty pandemic of influenza, 546,000 people died in the United States. I'm referring to my notes here just because there's a lot of numbers and I'm trying to keep things straight. 50 million people died worldwide in the influenza outbreak of 1918. Okay, and we tend to associate flu and influenza with winter time. The reason why I'm talking about this with you now is that these pandemics, especially the 1918 pandemic, influenza pandemic, started around March and it went throughout Europe throughout really May and June and it peaked in the summer. Okay. An interesting thing about where we're seeing right now, I'm sure a lot of you guys have paid attention to this in the news. We've been dealing with bouts of bird flu for quite a while now. In a way, it's sort of like the seasonal bird flu. We have to end up killing, you know, not we, but different government agencies have encouraged businesses to kill off X number of thousand birds. And we're seeing this again now. I think we've had our third case now in Tennessee. We've had a whole bunch of different poultry places that have had to destroy their birds. Um, we've had a lot of different birds that have been killed in Southeast Asia, of course, but there's a particular new strain of flu that is somewhat troubling. And the reason why I'm bringing this up right now is because throughout multiple pandemics of influenza, there's a pattern that shows up, a disease that shows up and has really nasty, you could say catastrophic effects in a certain species of animals. In the past, in the Middle Ages, there was the horse flu, so it showed up in horses first. Birds, of course, the swine flu showed up in the pigs, of course, in, uh, in 1918. There is a pattern that these animals being sick in the way in which they are is a harbinger of things to come. And so I think it behooves us if we're gonna be prepared to really focus on this and just to stay honed in on a few things. So most people are of course familiar with your garden variety influenza. You've got a sudden onset as you do with many types of viruses, but you've got your chills, your fever. It feels like essentially you got hit by a semi instead of just an F-150. That's the way you can differentiate. A cold is I got hit by an F-150 and then the semi being hit by semi is like the flu. Um, coughing of course, vomiting, aches, extreme tenderness and tiredness, all that stuff. So we know what an influenza looks like, but we haven't really had a really nasty case of it um, spreading and taking a lot of casualties with it in quite some time. So statistically, we're long overdue for this, especially when you consider the global population growth, as well as the exponential increase in interconnectedness and the ability to transit people and goods back and forth across large spaces, uh, more so than we ever have had before, right? So statistically, we're overdue for it. Chronologically, from a time standpoint, we're overdue for this. But I wanna talk about this particular virus that is circulating right now, the bird flu. The particular variety of virus that's going around right now in the bird population is an H7 virus, okay? And at this point, it's not been shown to heavily affect humans. And so for that reason, a lot of people will dismiss it, okay? And so people like me who are you know, kind of you got our heads on a swivel when it comes to this. We get made fun of or we get kind of belittled by other people like, oh, you're being paranoid. But the bottom line is look at the CDC's own website. Okay, the CDC themselves says that first off, pandemics are unpredictable and their ability to, to track them is, is very limited. Even in their diagnostic criteria, they fully recognize that even the best of their trained professionals, the best of their epidemiologists, you know, the best, the, the geeks in the lab, the geeks with their beakers and all the nerds with their, their you know, masking tape, held together glasses, all of those folks together still do not have 100% accuracy, okay? We can't even predict the weather, which we can say, let alone viral patterns, mutation patterns, okay? So what I wanna hit home with you guys here is that 
we have all of the little factors here together just waiting for a pandemic, okay? And don't be lulled into the sense of, oh, okay, just because it's summer, it's not, not relevant, I don't have to worry about it. In fact, I would submit that you probably, if you want to be more squared away than the general populace, you would store masks and other preparatory things ahead of time because the, the folks really, when it comes right down to it, okay, the supplies of masks and, and of, of cold and influenza season products, health, health supplies, they tend to be at the lowest point right about now, okay, because people aren't buying them anymore. So in case of a sudden run on, there's going to be a lot fewer supplies going around to people. Let me talk with you about N95s for a sec, okay, so this is an N95 respirator here, and with this N95, all right, this is a NIOSH N95, what you want here when you're getting a good fit on these, the seal is very important, but it's important to store these, okay, um, because you want to be able to protect yourself from inhaling the, the different uh, virus particles that are on droplets. It's a droplet um, borne thing. So that means you can inhale it. It can also be spread through, you know, touching people, you know, snot on your hands and that sort of thing. The question I get a lot with N95s is, you know, how long do they last? And this is kind of a freaky thing, guys, because with the N95s here, you're looking at degradation around about an hour, depending upon the, the concentration, you know, the particulate in the surrounding area, mainly because you're, you've got contamination from the outside, but also there's moisture in your breath that degrades the filtration. So one of the things I recommend that people store is a NIOSH N95 and listen, like people will go all over like, oh, with the N100s is better. Listen, all right? So the N100s, okay, you're gonna end up paying probably 10 times the price. These things are less than a dollar. I'll put a link in the description box. Amazon is running a sweet deal on them right now. They're like, like $14 for 20 of them. They're awesome, okay? Um, but I would much rather, if you got an X number of dollars to spend, I would much rather have 10 people with an N95 versus one with an N100, okay? Um, and the thing that people forget is these things lose efficacy after about an hour because the condensation inside this thing breaks down the fibers that do all the filtering, okay? So it's important to have a good stash of these around the house as well as other things. Elderberry syrup is really good, of course, as an herbal support for your immune system. And I'll put a link below to the, to the particular formula that I like. It's really important to get your stored stuff now, okay? Because in the event of a pandemic, and like I said, you know, this is still, it's kind of early, but my head's on a swivel right now because we've had a significant amount of the bird population that's been affected, okay? This is the right time of year for this thing to go if it wanted to go, um, if, if viruses can be said to have intent. But this is the right time of year, potentially for it to happen. The nastiest pandemics have happened typically right about now in the summertime. So I'm just, like I said, you know, just be prepared, be prepared for stuff. And the CDC, again, fully recognizes their own limitations. They don't know how this thing is going to behave. They're just watching it right now. And we've had more birds um, pop up, again, like I said, in Tennessee. And I think Malaysia's dealing with this right now. It's affecting a significant amount of poultry. So we just have to be careful, okay? Um, and for most people, this isn't gonna affect you right now, but I'm saying like this is early, so keep an eye on it, okay? And I do not want to wait. And you know people are, it doesn't matter. Like you could sit there, like tell them, hey, be ready, be ready, be ready, and be like, oh, whatever, you know. <laughs> you know, I gotta pay for the World Wrestling Network, which is awesome, by the way. <laughs> I love Jack Gallagher, just saying. He's one of my favorite wrestlers. Anyway, I mean, people got other things they wanna pay for, right? They don't wanna buy stuff like masks, you know, ugh, boring until they need it. And it's typically when you need it that you can't find it, or if you can find it, it's ridiculously expensive. So my advice would be to go ahead and store your masks up now while you have a chance, um, just to make sure, and PS guys, like these things are helpful regardless of what the situation is, okay? You know, it could be that, you know, you need to mow the lawn and you don't wanna breathe stuff. Like these are just good things to have anyway, right? So go ahead and store them up. But really, influenza, okay, like when you're dealing with this, people think that Tamiflu is gonna be this sort of like end all, be all, save all. Listen, no, it's not, okay? It's not. In fact, there are many strains that are actually showing resistance to Tamiflu, okay? And there's also Relenza and there's different antivirals that people take. But the thing is with Tamiflu, like this has got to be given within 48 hours of onset of symptoms. Okay. So a lot of people are sitting there thinking, oh, I'll just break it. I'll shove it off the first day. And then by the second day you're trying to, oh, I can get to the doctor. Maybe not. So you have to give that 
very early on in the process for it to be effective, okay? So it's not the end all be all, okay? It has to be administered correctly and it's not going to essentially kill the flu, it's just going to assist your body. It makes it basically not suck so bad that you have the flu. But natural support, of course, for being able to deal with influenza, um, there's some supportive herbs that are really helpful. Yarrow, bone set, pleurisy root, motherwort, cherry bark, by the way, bold wild cherry bark is awesome, wood betony. But your goals here when it comes right down to it with dealing with influenza are to support the person's fluids, to equalize their circulation, and to control excess fever. Some fever is okay. You know, the fever is the body's natural defense mechanism. It's trying to shoo the, the would-be invaders out of the body. And one of the ways that it does that is to ratchet up the thermostat, right? So we need to support our body in that and not fight it too much. But when it comes right down to it those are your those are your main goals there so guys your heads on a swivel with this one I'm not sure how it's gonna go, but I like to be prepared. I don't like to be the person like way behind the power curve. I've never been like that my entire life. I wanna know exactly what's going on. I wanna be prepared ahead of time, and I'm sure you are probably just like that too. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. If you did, I hope you'll come out to class and train with me. There's actually a lot of really good opportunities for you to train in 2017. This coming month in April, April 29th and 30th, I'm gonna be in Spokane, Washington. I'm also going to be at Valor Ridge in Harrogate, Tennessee, of course, in May. Atlanta Georgia is in June, Houston, Texas, and that's 101, 201, and 301, okay? So that's four days of training you have opportunity for. I do not teach 301 everywhere. I teach it in select regional locations. So if you're looking to get all of the material that I offer in one, one chance, there are a few places to do that. Um, Houston, of course, um, Knoxville, Tennessee, and then also we added Salt Lake, Salt Lake City, okay? Going to be in Peoria, Illinois, July 29th and 30th. Going to be in Exeter, New Hampshire in September. Reno, Nevada, October 28th. And 29. Salt Lake City is uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Friday, and Saturday. That's November 1st through the 4th. So you can check the full schedule out at the website, thepatriotnurse.com. I hope you enjoyed it today, guys. Heads on a swivel. Like I said, um, take care of yourselves. Make sure that you've got your masks. Those are important. And take care of your health, man. Really do. You got to focus on it. Um, I've said this in the past previously. I'm a huge fan of Green Vibrance and a big fan of Tangy Tangerine. If you're not on those supplements or at least have considered doing that, I really think you should. It may not be right for you, but at least you can take a look at it. Those are in the description box below. Take care of your health. I hope it was helpful for y'all. For now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off and I'll see y'all later. Bye.